right, by way of review, yay, we get to go back to Algebra 1, and we are going to talk properties of exponents. So our goal is to look at all siete, that's seven for you non-polyglots, we're going to look at all seven of the properties. Just to give you a heads up, salud, the, just to give you the heads up, all the names are only kind of important. You won't ever have to match them, but when I say power of a power, uh, you definitely need to understand what that means. So before we jump into actual what these are, uh, we do want to do a little bit of background for vocabulario, for vocab. This whole thing is called a power. Bottom corner. All right. The big number, the big number is called the base. And the little number is called the exponent. Now, if you use word dissection and your Latin slash Spanish, anybody know what X means? Outside. Outside or out. Anybody know Spanish? Poner, poner, to oh, put. put. <laughs> so what does exponent mean? To put out. So I put it away from this thing and I am putting it up a little bit higher or to put up in a sense. All right, so base, power, but we often will say a to the power of n, although the whole thing is a power. We rarely say uh, a to the exponent n. We wouldn't say that, but the exponent is the n. The base is the large number. Okay, so let's take a gander up here. I'm not going to spend our time proving these, although I'll give one or two examples as to how we came up with these rules, but let's remember one thing. If you ever forget the rule, if you ever forget, that's okay. When in doubt, write it out. When in doubt, write it out. So, when in doubt, just write the whole thing out. And I'll show you an example of that momentarily. The first thing is called the product of powers. Product means multiplication. So I'm multiplying powers together. So notice here, x x. So it's going to look something like this. The algebraic form looks like this. a to the power of m times a to the power of n. Notice algebraic uses almost all letters as much as possible. And the rule for this simply says when the bases are the same, you keep the base and just add the exponents together. Add the exponents together. Now, you may ask, why? And of course, I will say, I have an answer. So let's just say, for example, sorry, I didn't leave a lot of room for this, so feel free to write this or not. But if I said 2 to the third power times 2 to the second power, and I don't know what the rule is, and I say, well, what am I going to do? Well, you could just say the first part there is just 2 times 2 times 2, right? And the second part there, this one here, is 2 times 2. Well, if I were to count them up, how many 2s do I have now? 2 to the 5th. Good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, going backwards, how can I skip this step entirely? Oh, if the bases are the same, add the exponents. So, by way of an example, you do, you do not ever have to write this middle step right here. This is completely optional. In fact, I would prefer you not to write this step. So that would be an optional step. So just jump straight to this. X to the 17. Because that's the point of the shortcut, is to make it short. Okay, the next one is called a power of power. And notice that this is going to look kind of similar, but it has only one base. Look, A only shows up once. But what I do is I take this power and I raise it to a power. So A to the M to the nth power. Well, this one's nice because all we end up doing is multiplying the exponents. So all I have to write is MN. Don't have to put the times there. So by way of an example, por ejemplo, Again, this first step is extraneous. You don't have to write this. I'm just showing you mentally what's going on. So we just jump straight to y to the 16. 
So this next one, instead of being a product of powers or a power of powers, it's a power of a product. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss thing. All right. So in other words, I have a product inside and I raise the whole puppy to a power. Well, this is the closest to the distributive property you're going to see because the shorty cutty here is essentially all you do is send the exponent to every base. Send the exponent to every base. So A to the M times B to the M. Notice this is not, it is not the confusing one that we looked at before. Many of us would say this, A plus B to the Mth power like that. And it is not AM plus BM. We already know how to do this one. We looked at this one by the binary theorem. So do not do uh, distribute the exponent in this case because of the plus or the minus inside. It only applies to multiply and technically division because division is multiplication. All right, so this first one here, all you have to do is effectively send the base in. Again, you don't have to write this first step, but I will just to show you. You could just jump straight to the evaluation. 3 cubed is 27, and x cubed remains x cubed. Please attack the next one. All right, next one, zero. Ah, zero is the great equalizer. Zero does, is, is the most amazing number ever invented slash discovered. All right, um, A to the zeroth power is always a big fat one. Just like when you multiply by zero, you always get zero. Whenever you add zero, you always get your original number. So exponentialized to zero will always give you one. Yes, by the zero. So looking at this, who cares what everything is? Oh, shouldn't I just send that zero in? Don't bother, don't waste your time. The whole thing is to the power of zero, the answer is one. So don't make it overly complicated. Oh, look, oh no, it's the fraction. What do I do? Power of what? Say again? We can make a, a caveat on that for this one here. A cannot be zero. If it were, it would be undefined. All right, let's go ahead and skip to the negative exponent because of the pattern we established on the board, which is not on this screenshot here. A negative exponent looks like this. A to the negative one just means take your base and, take, and, and flip it, reciprocate it. So it's one over A. One over A. So this one here. How does, what happens here? This means the whole negative one simply says reciprocate the inside. Three over A and I'm done. Now there's no other exponent to send in. If there were a two as an exponent, I would send that in as well. So it's A to the negative first equals one over A. So, good. So if we look at this next one, only the A and the B have negatives. So what about the four? He's locked in place. Four stays where he is. No big deal. All right, so it's the A that drops down and the exponent positifies. There's a good word for you. And the B moves up and also positifies like that. Four locks in place because he has no negative exponent. The A's and B's switch places because of their respective negatives. Next, power of a quotient and, pa and a quotient of a power are exactly the same as what we've seen before. They're just fractionized. So in other words, it's uh, still multiplication, just uh, in a different form. So power of a quotient, power of a quotient. So I have a quotient, and a quotient means the answer to a division problem. So A over B, like this. So that's a quotient. And when I raise that to a power, that just simply means the m, the exponent, distributes to my base. Notice that's exactly the same as this one up here. Oh, the exponent distributes to each base. So that's the power of a quotient. So by way of example, you do not need to show this middle step, but the first step here would be 2 squared over 3 squared. I send the exponent to each base. 
then you can just skip and jump to that, but four ninths is what we get, not four sixth. Don't say three times two, common mistake. Make sure you square that. And the last one we want to look at is called a quotient of a power. A quotient of a power. So what we're going to do is divide two powers. And it might not even be a power. It could be just be powers. So, All right, so what we do is I have a to some power, like a to the m. I'll change that color there. And I'm dividing. And notice here, the bases are the same. They're both a's. And the exponents. The exponents could be the same or different. It doesn't matter. But notice before, up there when I, were, when I was multiplying here, when I was multiplying, I added the exponents. So what if I converted that to a division? How does the other part change? Exactamongo. In this case, all we say is equals a to the m minus n. You just subtract your exponents. Now, in some cases... You could end up getting a negative result, so it might not be um, the best to use this property straight out, but oftentimes it will be. Like in this case, it's straightforward. So x stays x. Again, 6 minus 3 can be done in your head. You don't need to write that. So I can just jump straight to x to the third power here. Now another way to attack this is instead of actually thinking about subtraction in your head, you could think about subtraction in, in this context right here. Just say, oh, all three of these go away, and three of those stay. The benefit of doing this is if the remainder is in the numerator, it's in the numerator. If the remainder is in the denominator, it's in the denominator, and I don't need to deal with any negative exponents. So now take a gander there and practice that real quick.